You're driving yourself crazy with all that research. I'll tell you how to buy a car, my friend. Police auction. <laughs> no, thank you. I got this baby for 4,000 bucks. Well, sure, on a hot day, you can still tell it was a canine unit, but well, that's a hell of a deal. I mean, look at this car. It rated number one in the National Transportation Board crash test, but Consumer Reports gives it the worst repair record. It's nice. Red. You know, I wouldn't mind something a little sportier for myself, but Dharma definitely needs something safe and boxy and... Uh, Swedish. Hey, is... Is that a bullet hole? Oh, yeah, I told you about that girl Tanya, right? Hey, check out this pad, boy. It says seven hundred dollars. I bet you can get it for five. Yeah, but where do you dock it? So I hope they move it before Dharma sees. Hey, boys, check out my new wheels. You mean because uh, she might buy it? What do you think? Uh, well, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, uh, totally bitchin'. Yes, that's just the mot juste I was looking for. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you to arrange the jack-o'-lanterns so they don't look arranged. Now look at this little window. Hello out there. I used to have a car like this. Your mother never looked prettier than riding beside me, the wind in her hair. Edward, I never knew you when you drove a convertible. Hmm. I wonder whatever happened to that gal. Ed, will you please explain to Dharma that when you buy a used car, you're just buying someone else's problems. Honey, you don't know anything about this car. Oh, I know a lot about it. It's a great ride. It's a cool color. And it has a very roomy trunk. You don't know how it was maintained. You don't know how it was driven. You don't know anything about the previous owner. Sure I do. He, uh, he liked racehorses. <laughs> smoked Lucky Strikes. And he had a head. <laughs> ring a ding ding Dolphus. Smart hat, buddy. <laughs> Here, Ed, this could be your Halloween costume. <laughs> hey, Kitty, what do you think? For the country club thing? Absolutely not. We're going as Robin Hood and Maid Marian as always. Oh, I hate Halloween. I'm never allowed to eat the candy. Some kid always eggs my house and I have to wear green pantyhose. They're tight, Edward. Tighter every year. <laughs> hey, guys, how about instead of going to a restaurant tonight, we get a couple buckets of chicken, drive someplace where there's a view, and neck. <laughs> Now he's taking the car to another mechanic, but they all just keep saying the same thing. Car's fine, junk the husband. I will buy the car from you. $200 right now, cash. Don't think about it, just do it. Come on, I wouldn't look hot in that. Well, it's got a lot of problems, but it is safe, and I must admit, it's a kick in the head to drive. Really? Of course, we might have to, uh, freeze a few palms to get it to pass that smog check. So, neat jacket. Did you find that in the trunk? No, I had the top down. It got a little chilly, so I stopped and I picked it up for ten bucks. Look, it goes with the, uh... Huh. <laughs> yeah, it does. But they've been separated for years. <laughs> Look at you, reuniting them like some kind of weird daytime talk show for clothes. You think he would take six bucks for the jacket? I would look hot in it. <laughs> Honey, do we have any, uh, juicy fruit? Juicy fruit? I'm gonna cruise over to the store and pick up a pack. Back in the gym. Do you smell Old Spice? Yeah. I think he'd been drinking it. Good night, Finkelstein. Hold on, Ed. You might want to take a look at this. You know how stuff has been walking out of the supply room lately? Yeah. Well, I hooked up an extra security camera, and guess who just snuck in there? Your secretary and your director of integrated marketing systems. You're kidding. Oh, good Lord, I don't want to see that. <laughs> Neither do I. But it's my job. Finkelstein, do you think you could set up one of those cameras at my place? You and Kitty want to spice things up in the bedroom, huh? 
Listen, Finkelstein, I want to catch the punk that's been egging my house every Halloween. You know, you can't get egg off. You have to repaint the whole damn house. <laughs> All right. I'll set it up tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> Boy, she won't even get me coffee. <laughs> Where's Greg? Got me. Last night, he went out for gum, came back three hours later. Said he was throwing dice with the guy at the store. <laughs> Greg doesn't gamble. I know. <laughs> Buy yourself something pretty. Sorry I'm late, but the chow's on me. I hit the trifecta at Golden Gate. Hey, hey, hey. Who's got a little sugar for daddy-o? <laughs> mm. What you got going on here? You like it? A little stash. A little disturbing. Give us some time. It'll grow on you. It's growing on me. <laughs> when did you learn that? When did I learn that? I gotta go see a man about a horse. Order me a porterhouse, yay thick bone in. Duke him a fin. Tell him I want it to moo. You know, the stash might be the least creepy thing about him. How long has he been acting like this? Oh, a couple days. It's really weird. The clothes, the aftershave, and he wants to drive my car all the time. And then when I ask him what's happening, he says, you are, baby, you are. <laughs> you know what it sounds like to me, Dharma? It sounds like the car is taking him over. Abby, a car can't possess someone. No, of course not. The residual energy from a previous owner can. <laughs> Especially if he departed this plane of existence in a troubled state. What do you know about this car? I guess not a lot. Dharma, I'm surprised at you. You of all people should know you can't buy a used car if you don't first check out its spiritual history. You know what is wrong with men's rooms these days? No shoe shine stands. Ooh, check out those shoes. Two-tone spectators, I'm out cruising around, I got the top down, I see them in a window, something came over me. Cuckoo, huh? All right, Craig, come on, what is happening? You are, baby, you are. Well, to start with, there's only been one owner, there's been no major accidents, and it really does only have 60,000 miles. I checked with a DMV. Hey, Pete, thanks for doing this. Oh, it's no problem, I had to go down there anyway. Been driving on an expired Jamaican license since 89. So, did you find out about any weird knocking sounds or poltergeists? Any mention of a bone chilling draft from the glove compartment? Oh. Maybe it's on the back here. Thomas thinks the car has a ghost. So, did you find out anything about the guy who owned it? It's a Stanley Green. He died in 1972, but his sister kept the car in storage until earlier this month. Oh, yeah, I got an article about the guy. Yeah, right here. Local crime figure found dead. Apparent suicide under investigation. Ooh, the hair on my arm just went wah. <laughs> Local bookmaker Stanley Shorty Green was found slumped over the wheel of his car in his garage. Apparent suicide, excessive gambling debts. Hmm. Look at Ann Landis. Even back then, same stupid haircut. <laughs> Hey, Toots, what's happening? You are, baby, you are. <laughs> okay, Abby, Greg could wake up any minute. Can you skip the little spirits and just look for the huge dead gamblers? Greg's still asleep? Yeah, he was up all night playing Texas Hold'em in the back of some dentist's office. He came home with $200 and a shopping bag full of floss, because floss don't grow on trees, baby. <laughs> Okay, okay. I think, I think I'm getting something here. <clears throat> Dharma, you know what? I'm not really very good with cars. I know a woman in Berkeley, but you might have to leave it with her a couple of days. A couple of days? Okay, check with your insurance. Sometimes they pay for a rental. <laughs> You know what, honey? I think you have to consider the possibility that whatever negative energy was in this car is now in Greg. So if that means that Greg is becoming Shorty Green and Shorty Green killed himself oh. in this car. Abby, I have to get rid of this car. Yeah. 
I don't know why they call him Shorty. He looks like a regular-sized person to me. Where did you find that? Greg's briefcase. Derm, isn't that the file of stuff you showed me before? No, that's still upstairs. Whoa, wait a minute. If this is in Greg's briefcase, then he knows all about Shorty Green. Uh -oh. He's totally screwing with me. <laughs> He's just doing this to make me get rid of the car. Well, Dharma, can you blame him? The thing's haunted. <laughs> hey, Daddy, your baby's home. Hey, then. Sorry I'm late, but geez, Louise, the day just got away from me. I wanted to go shopping for some unmentionables. But the car just wanted to go to the track. It's like it knew the way. And how did things go at the track? Not so hot. But I met this guy. He's six foot one and his brother's a jockey. Go figure, right? <laughs> Anyway, he gave me a tip about a filly running tonight. But I'm flat broke, so, um... How's about you and me go get some lettuce, head back to the track, and turn that lettuce into dough? <laughs> come on, come on, I'll drive. We don't have to do that. No, we don't. Do we, Greg? No, because I can phone in the bet. Come on, give it up. Hey, Mikey, guess who? Yeah, I want to bet the eighth race at Golden Gate. Uh, elbow room to win. I don't know. Give me, uh, give me five grand. Ooh, make it ten. Make it twenty. He wants to make it twenty, Mikey. That must be some tip. You heard the lady make it twenty large. And be quiet when you back up the money truck. My neighbors like to sleep in. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, doll. I'm gonna bop down to the corner for a hot shave. I'll meet you out front in a half an hour and we'll go paint the town red with white polka dots. <laughs> Pingle Cena, I sure appreciate you helping me out with this thing. Frankly, I'm always glad to get out of the house on Halloween. Abby has this party for her friends. They cackle and dance around. It's a regular coven. Yeah, I know what you mean. Kitty has her book club ladies over. Oh, you mean an actual coven. They light a big bonfire and parade around naked. No kidding. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, when her friends were in their 20s, it was kind of nice. These days, I can take it or leave it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, we'll watch the front of the house from here. The camera will give us a view from the side. We're going to catch us an egg thrower. Finkelstein, are, are, are you sure the camera's pointed in the right direction? Hey, who's the surveillance professional here? What are you supposed to be? A wonderful, trusting human being who is open to many possibilities in this universe and because of that is being made fun of by her husband. Nobody's gonna get that. Hey, Dharma. Hey. Is Greg upstairs? No. He ran to the corner for a shave and I don't know how that's gonna work out because there's just a Starbucks there. Oh, hey, there's my briefcase. No. This is Greg's briefcase. No, no, no. It used to be Greg's briefcase. He gave it to me because he found another one. It used to belong to Sammy Davis Jr. This is your briefcase? Yeah. All the stuff in here is yours? Yeah. And what was it doing in our car? I must have thrown it in the trunk when he dragged me down to the Indian casino. All right. If this briefcase is yours, then what's in it? I don't know. The Greenblatt file, the Suarez deposition, my copy of the files about the car. Oh, my God. So he wasn't screwing with me. Hey, uh, Greg asked me to bring by some cash. Heard he's having a little trouble with the ponies. Tell him I could only get 9000 Pete, I made him bet $20,000. Yeah, and he lost. Well, he's going to have to get the rest from his parents or pawn something. Tell him to do it quick, because Mike is serious. I thought it was Mikey. It's Mike when he's serious. <laughs> Wait, Pete, if I wanted to get rid of a car, but I didn't want to sell it because I didn't want the burden of unleashing evil onto some innocent person, what should I do? 
someone stole the car, that wouldn't be an innocent person. Well, how would I get it stolen? Besides leaving it here with the keys in it? Thanks. <laughs> and don't stand by it. Right. <laughs> so did she believe it was your briefcase? Yeah, it was touch and go for a minute, but I didn't think she did. She's getting rid of the car. She left the keys in it. So long, Shorty. <laughs> well, don't stand next to it. Come on. <laughs> Stop that. Was I humming again? The seat, Finkelstein. Stop moving the seat. I can't get comfortable. It's a Mercedes. You're comfortable. <laughs> Ooh, can I have some potato chips? What are you doing? Putting chips on my sandwich? You can't put chips on your sandwich. Chips are a side dish. For you, they're on the side. For me, that part of the sandwich. <laughs> some people eat mayonnaise on the side. No one eats mayonnaise on the side. <laughs> well, if you did, I wouldn't judge you. I'm gonna hit the latrine. Oh. Here you go. What is that? We're on a stakeout. Here's your latrine. I'm not gonna use that. It's okay. I won't watch. I don't care about that. I'm going inside. All right. Just rinse it out before you bring it back. Hey, you! What are you doing there? Stop! Stop! Get away from there! Did you see who it was? Oh, Larry, what are you doing here? Edward asked me to help catch the egg thrower. Well, nice try. Look at my house. It'll never come off. No, egg doesn't come off. You have to paint. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Well, this year I'm thinking sage with, um, hunter green trim. <laughs> Actually, the trim's okay. They missed it completely. Oh. You know, Larry, would you check around back? They couldn't have gotten very far. Good thinking. You know, I didn't like the looks of those ballerinas. <laughs> oh, there goes the trim. Sorry about the car. Oh, no, what happens? Cars get stolen. You know, it was fun while it lasted, but I think we're better off in a more conventional Swedish car. Yeah. Hey, honey, I'm really glad that you're back to normal, but I did a bad thing. I let someone steal the car you love on purpose, and now some unsuspecting person whose only crime is that he steals cars <laughs> will be doomed to live out the life of Shorty Green. Irma. Nobody's doomed. Yes, they are, honey. We have to find that car. No, we don't. Listen, the whole thing was a scam. It was my briefcase. I didn't make any bets. We're not broke. I just figured it was the only way I could get you to get rid of the car. <laughs> this kind of thing isn't like you. No, I know, and, and I'm sorry. I should have stopped, but I... I I got carried away. It was kind of fun. No, don't apologize, honey. It wasn't you. It was the car. No, it wasn't the car. <laughs> honey, Greg Montgomery is not deceitful and lying to his wife and pulling off some kind of con game. But you know who is? Shorty Green. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? I said I planned the whole thing out. But not until after you had already driven the car and been under its influence. Darma. Honey, it's okay. I'll find the car myself. My mother knows a woman in Berkeley who can take care of it. So... <laughs> But a car can't be possessed. Of course not, honey. A person is possessed. A car is haunted. <laughs> oh, look, they have lobster today. 
Uh, here you go, kitten. There's your earring. Thanks, baby. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Man, she is limber. In a half an hour, we'll go paint the town red with white polka dots. Pinkle Cena, I sure appreciate you helping me out with this thing. Frankly, I'm always glad to get out of the house on Halloween. Abby has this party for her friends. They cackle and dance around. It's a regular coven. Yeah, I know what you mean. Kitty has her book club ladies over. And... Oh, you mean an actual coven. They light a big bonfire and parade around naked. No kidding. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, when her friends were in their 20s, it was kind of nice. These days, I can take it or leave it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, we'll watch the front of the house from here. The camera will give us a view from the side. We're going to catch us an egg thrower. Finkelstein, are, are, are you sure the camera's pointed in the right direction? Hey, who's the surveillance professional here? <laughs> what are you supposed to be? A wonderful, trusting human being who is open to many possibilities in this universe and because of that is being made fun of by her husband. Nobody's gonna get that. Hey, Dharma. Hey. Is Greg upstairs? No. He ran to the corner for a shave and I don't know how that's gonna work out because there's just a Starbucks there. Oh, hey, there's my briefcase. No. This is Greg's briefcase. Uh, uh, totally bitchin'. Yes, that's just the mot juste I was looking for. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you to arrange the jack-o'-lanterns so they don't look arranged. Now look at this little window. Hello out there. I used to have a car like this. Your mother never looked prettier than riding beside me, the wind in her hair. Edward, I never knew you when you drove a convertible. Hmm. I wonder whatever happened to that gal. Ed, will you please explain to Dharma that when you buy a used car, you're just buying someone else's problems. Honey, you don't know anything about this car. Oh, I know a lot about it. It's a great ride, it's a cool color, and it has a very roomy trunk. You don't know how it was maintained, you don't know how it was driven, you don't know anything about the previous owner. Sure I do. He, uh... He liked racehorses, <laughs> smoked Lucky Strikes, and he had a head. <laughs> ring a ding ding Dolphus. Smart hat, buddy. <laughs> Here, Ed, this could be your Halloween costume. <laughs> hey, Kitty, what do you think? For the country club thing? Absolutely not. We're going as Robin Hood and Maid Marian as always. Oh, I hate Halloween. I'm never allowed to eat the candy. Some kid always eggs my house and I have to wear green panties. Guys, how about instead of going to a restaurant tonight, we get a couple buckets of chicken, drive someplace where there's a view, and neck. <laughs> so now he's taking the car to another mechanic, but they all just keep saying the same thing. Car's fine, junk the husband. <laughs> I will buy the car from you. $200 right now, cash. Don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> Come on, I would look hot in that. Well, it's got a lot of problems, but it is safe, and I must admit, it's a kick in the head to drive. Really? Of course, we might have to, uh, grease a few palms to get it to pass that smog check. So, neat jacket. Did you find that in the trunk? No, I had the top down, it got a little chilly, so I stopped and I picked it up for 10 bucks. Look, it goes with the, uh, hat. <laughs> yeah, it does. But they've been separated for years. <laughs> Look at you, reuniting them like some kind of weird daytime talk show for clothes. You think he would take six bucks for the jacket? I would look hot in it. <laughs> Honey, do we have any, uh, juicy fruit? Juicy fruit? I'm gonna cruise over to the store and pick up a pack. Back in the gym. Do you smell Old Spice? Yeah. I think he'd been drinking it. 
Good night, Finkelstein. Hold on, Ed. You might want to take a look at this. But the car just wanted to go to the track. It's like it knew the way. And how did things go at the track? Not so hot. But I met this guy. He's six foot one and his brother's a jockey. Go figure, right? <laughs> Anyway, he gave me a tip about a filly running tonight. But I'm flat broke, so, um... How's about you and me go get some lettuce, head back to the track, and turn that lettuce into dough? <laughs> come on, come on, I'll drive. We don't have to do that. No, we don't. Do we, Greg? No, because I can phone in the bet. Come on, give it up. Hey, Mikey, guess who? Yeah, I want to bet the eighth race at Golden Gate. Uh, elbow room to win. I don't know. Give me, uh, give me five grand. Ooh, make it ten. Make it twenty. He wants to make it twenty, Mikey. There must be some tip. You heard the lady make it twenty large. And be quiet when you back up the money truck. My neighbors like to sleep in. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, doll. I'm gonna bop down to the corner for a hot shave. I'll meet you out front in a half an hour and we'll go paint the town red with white polka dots. <laughs> make it 10, make it 20. He wants to make it 20, Mikey. There must be some tip. You heard the lady make it 20 large and be quiet when you back up the money truck. My neighbors like to sleep in. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, doll. I'm gonna bop down to the corner for a hot shave. I'll meet you out front in a half an hour and we'll go paint the town red with white polka dots. <laughs> Finkelstein, I sure appreciate you helping me out with this thing. Frankly, I'm always glad to get out of the house on Halloween. Abby has this party for her friends. They cackle and dance around. It's a regular coven. Yeah, I know what you mean. Kitty has her book club ladies over. Oh, you mean an actual coven. They light a big bonfire and parade around naked. No kidding. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, when her friends were in their 20s, it was kind of nice. These days, I can take it or leave it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, we'll watch the front of the house from here. The camera will give us a view from the side. We're going to catch us an egg thrower. Finkelstein, are, are, are you sure the camera's pointed in the right direction? Hey, who's the surveillance professional here? What are you supposed to be? A wonderful, trusting human being who is open to many possibilities in this universe, and because of... To me, because he found another one who used to belong to Sammy Davis Jr. This is your briefcase? Yeah. All the stuff in here is yours? Yeah. And what was it doing in our car? I must have thrown it in the trunk when he dragged me down to the Indian casino. All right. This briefcase is yours. Then what's in it? I don't know, the Greenblatt file, the Suarez deposition, my copy of the files about the car. Oh, my God. So he wasn't screwing with me. Hey, uh, Greg asked me to bring by some cash. I heard he's having a little trouble with the ponies. Tell him I could only get 9000 Pete, I made him bet $20,000. Yeah, and he lost. Well, he's going to have to get the rest from his parents or pawn something. Tell him to do it quick, because Mike is serious. I thought it was Mikey. It's Mike when he's serious. <laughs> Wait, Pete, if I wanted to get rid of a car, but I didn't want to sell it because I didn't want the burden of unleashing evil into some innocent person, what should I do? If someone stole the car, that wouldn't be an innocent person. Well, how would I get it stolen? Besides leaving it here with the keys in it? Thanks. And don't stand by it. Right. 